We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. We have one of the top matches um, uh, of the Florida State Championship here for us today. So, um, Tyler, if you could uh, get hit that play button and we'll uh, get right into it. So to this uh, this match, the main, the key, um, the key perspective behind this match is collaboration. This season, um, as you can, as as most of you guys can tell, like with the four corners of the field and with the four robots, it may seem as if collaboration isn't really something that's necessary, but it really is. And so successful collaboration is what makes teams work so well. As you can see right now, what's happening, the autonomous period 3101 and 10345 are playing right here. It's very hard to see because of the ref, but you might be able to see a little bit. 3101 actually does the double sample where 10345 Royal Blue um, doesn't actually. They um, the 10345 actually just lands and stays in place. So if Tyler, if you could pause this or pause the, the match around here, that would be wonderful. Um, so as you see, uh, as you can tell, tell over here, um, well, actually, just just for a bit of background, um, let's see. Yeah, these two teams are very, very capable. Um, 3101 is one of the top. Te well, actually, both of these teams are one of are the top teams in Florida, but um, 3101 is doing especially well with their season. And 10345 has actually put out a robot reveal, and they show them like being able to score very, very consistently. As such, both of these teams do have an 80 point um, uh, like uh, sampling autonomous, a full autonomous. Um, so this this uh, what's it called? This double sampling wasn't done. Um, this double sampling that happened in this match wasn't done during the um, d due to necessity. It was more done due to actually like field positioning, um, and that was actually a pretty impressive strategic design uh, or a st strategy choice because it allows the two teams to not have any kind of interaction or collision um, with themselves. Um, however, that does uh, get rid of the ten points that could could come with parking on the crater. So Tyler, if you could uh, get this match rolling again, we can uh, we can go into it a bit more. Ah, uh, that's uh, so yeah. So um, on the red alliance, the red alliance is team thirty one hundred one and one zero three four five, and the blue alliance is uh, is their opposition. This is actually finals match three. Both both alliances had won one match, and as such, these teams are um, they're going they're really um, going for it and trying very hard to ensure that they're able to um, to to get that win and move on to the Florida State Championship. So thirty one hundred one right now is the team on the red alliance that's going in the crater, and one zero three four five is the other team, the team on the opposite sides crater who's going and scoring in the um the mineral depot right now so if we look at uh, 3101's bot you can really see that it has a sorting dumper and it's super optimized for that crater position 10345 on the other hand doesn't sort on their dump they actually just have an intake on two sides which picks up whatever they want and they can dump wh wherever they want and because of this, um, it may not seem like an ideal design choice, but because of this, this team is actually able to, um, uh, this, this alliance is able to have a very, very good composition and work well together. And that's actually key to this alliance winning that match. So as you see, um, the match continue. 1-0-3101 just keeps piling it on there from their crater. But right now, 10345 actually switched up their um, their alliance position and switched up the way that they were attacking that um, that far side or that secondary position. They went from the far crater to the near crater and then back to the far crater right now. And that dynamics, that maneuverability, uh, I think is what allows them to be very, very successful and very, very quick. So Tyler, if you could pause it right here. Um, here we're gonna get closer to the end game period. But if you see, if you um, if you observe um, on the far side, it's very hard to see because of this camera angle. But the reason that team one zero three four five moved back to the their friendly crater was due to the fact that the blue alliance was actually sort of blocking that access point. Both the robots were at their crater, and as such, they weren't really able to one zero three four five. I guess wasn't able to really intake from there. Um, so. 
Uh, 10345, who's um, who's at the far crater right now, was unable to achieve that position at that moment. But instead of waiting, right, instead of ticking down the the clock and uh, wasting valuable cycle seconds, uh, si seconds to score those minerals effectively, they were able to actually be very dynamic in their strategy and come right back to the near crater. And I think that that's um, that's really something that uh, that that proves to have a lot of um, have a lot of potential in in, ter in terms of uh, the secondary position match play. Um, a lot of teams I know are very rigid in their strategies in the like at this stage of the season. Um, but having this uh, having this ability to think on your feet and uh, play both positions is very uh, important. So Tyler, if you could uh, continue that match, that would be wonderful. Um, so as but but one thing that's really important to see is that 3101 and 10345 never actually collide. There's no interaction between the alliance partners on the same alliance. And that is super important because most times when uh, both teams go to the crater, go to the same crater, they are um, they're less effective because they're having that collision. They're not able to um, work with each other. So see, oh, see right here. That's exactly what happens. Uh, 10345 just touches 3101 and Basically, if if teams are to go for this strategy, if teams are to go for this collaborative strategy, which um, see uh, again, there's a touch right there on the near crater where um, the the red circle is, and if if teams are able to, but if teams are able to um, maneuver around each other more effectively this strategy becomes more and more viable. Unfortunately, if this doesn't happen, if teams are, um, if teams are uh, uh, colliding way too much, um, being on the same crater becomes slower and slower and slower. And as such, teams would generally be better off going for their opposing crater. So I think that this, um, this match right now, um, this was a bit earlier in the season. I believe it was about a month old or so. And um, at that early stage, um, being able to be this dynamic is pretty, pretty, is pretty key and uh, it's very advanced for what teams are doing. But as teams move along, I think that we'll be able to, um, I think we'll be able to see the strategy become more and more viable with teams uh, able to really, um, with teams able to work themselves around and um, work, uh, work well with each other. So um, Nathan, do you have any thoughts on this match? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm just gonna ask if I heard you correctly, there was someone who double sampled earlier, is that correct? That's right. So I heard you saying that you, I heard you kind of advocating for that, saying you kind of like that. And I was curious why, because we'll see actually in the next match, uh, we're um, going to be talking about qualification 21 from Wisconsin State, where Kraken Pinion actually does a double sample. But I mean, they won the match by a long shot, but they actually hurt themselves point one get the breakdown of what their partner was able to do. Hmm. So that's fair. Um, Personally, I think I might have miss miss said that I don't particularly adv uh, advocate for the double sample, especially in a scenario like this, where that both of those teams are capable of doing their own eighty point autonomous, and that is because if we if we watch that autonomous, um, they lose ten points because team one zero three four five doesn't. Uh, park in the depot. I only I, I only think that the double sample is really useful when it's um when it's teams that are able to um, that aren't able to sample um just sort of stay in their own corner and the one team gets gets more points um because that's sort of a necessity and that really adds to the point total. But in a scenario like this, I'm not too keen on this. The only thing I can possibly think of why they did such a thing was because um they realized their autonomous paths would collide otherwise if they both ran their autos at the same time and as such this. Was was a dynamic solution to that problem but i really um i don't know it's a it's a mixed bag if a team is is if teams are so capable like this i don't think i would actually um encourage them to do something like this yeah and then uh something else i was thinking about is so we saw a lot of that colliding there happening for the red alliance in that bottom right crater uh one mm -hmm. thing i thought of is um to think about as a drive team if you and your uh, alliance partners both are um really good at scoring into the lander so you're both going to be really going to those craters think about having the uh near the person uh, sorry the robot right in front of that uh, lander going to that near crater but have the other robot go to the far crater because you're most likely going to be interfering with the blue alliance no penalty there at all and you're playing defense to an extent while also because uh uh it's effective um, and it's uh, a way to score points while also inhibiting the other alliance.
Exactly. I totally agree with that. And if we see that um, that aligns, the um, 10345 actually does do that. The thing that I found unique was that I think that that's the more standard strategy, exactly what you're saying, where the secondary team goes to that far creator. And uh, I think that's really effective. Um, but what I really appreciated out of this match was that the team was very dynamic in the sense that they were able to do both. Um, as we saw, they did have that collision and that was a bit of a problem. So, um, I think that that might have that that was a bit of a problem. I think that that um, that really did lower their point total. But at the same time, I think that what these guys are doing, in the sense that they're able to really read the field and uh, work around their opponents um, to maximize their own cycles, makes them much more efficient than if they were to simply have stuck with that far crater um, and and just waited if they couldn't get those minerals the first time. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.